you know, getting like a low air throw, for example. I know a lot of people are like, yo, how do you low air throw? So like you respond to the air dash and you meet where the air dash is gonna go to, right? And then you just jump air throw. Because again, once somebody air dash, they cannot change their art of where they're gonna go where they're gonna go. They have to finish that 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 arch that they're going to before they can do anything else. What is going on everybody? We are back and you already know I'm about to tell you guys right now, support your boy. All right, so today's video, we went ahead and we broke down, yo, how to anti-air in this game, right? I feel like anti-airing is very hard to kind of understand because everybody be like, yo, just six people, right? But I feel like it's a little bit more deeper than that. So we kind of dived into it and I showed you guys a little bit of cool tips and tricks of how to use variable anti-airs. And I hope this guys help you guys so far to the point where I be seeing you guys anti-airing with air throws, air to airs, and you know, all these amazing hit confirms that all these characters have. But before we jump into these confirms and these air throws, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Let's and run. let me know how you guys feel about this video. And let me know if this actually helped you guys anti-air game. Because I want you guys to be monsters, you know? I want you guys to be going around. And I want to be watching you guys air throw. I'll be like, man, that was a sick air throw, you know? Or that was a sick air to air. I want to say stuff like that. So, again, make sure you guys subscribe to the channel. Make sure you guys leave a like. And let me know how you guys feel about this video. Let's jump into it. All right, guys. You know, I've been asked a lot, how do you anti-air and air throw so good? So let me tell you the lore of why I made sure my air throws and Guilty Gear, or in like fighting games in general that have a lot of like air options, why I put so much energy into it. It's because when I was first getting into these games, coming from Street Fighter, one of the things that I, that I lost a lot to was I kept getting jumped on. And I got so mad that every time I, Play. And like I play against a certain character, I got jumped on. I was like, I am so tired of this. I literally got so mad. I was like, you know what? Every time I play somebody, I don't care if they're good or whatever. My whole goal is just to air throw you every single time. I'm just going to practice it. I don't care if I lose. My goal is to air throw you at least 10 times this game. I'm going to make you jump. What character should we start off with, right? Let's start off with, let's use this character as an example, right? Anti-airing like May, right? How to anti-air optimally? Right? Not even optimally. What is the effective way of anti-air? And one of the good, one of the questions that a lot of people ask is like, yo man, like, how the f do you air throw these characters? You know, 6P is never always the answer for everything because you got situations like this where your 6P loses, right? So now we get to like the unique part. And it's like, you know, how to choose when to anti-air with certain tools that all characters most likely have, right? The general concept is like, mixing up your entire options. I mean, air throws that is one answer. It's not the whole soul answer. Even though I put my heart and soul of anti-air with air throw, anti-air with air throw is not always key. Like an air to air is considered like an anti -air, right? Because the whole concept is you're stopping the person from jumping. So one button, uh, one input that has anti-air properties isn't always the right anti-air to do. And that's how like, that's how fighting games get tricky. Because it's like, why is the person always jumping? Why isn't he like, not anti-airing with his move, but he's jumping to anti-air? And people be like, well, is this anti-air not good in the ground? And that's not always the case. The anti-air is good on the ground, but for some instances, it's like some characters archetype, you have to change the way you anti-air. A couple of ways of like anti-airing, believe it or not, this is a really, very good basic anti-air, but like, if you know a character's like coming or coming like coming in the air like that, and they don't have a move that hits from behind, responding to like a run-up button like this is also a good way. One of the strongest ways of like having an anti-air game is like being able to anti-air but not be complacent of where you anti-air, right? Another thing to keep in mind too is like you know air to air, right? Air to air is a very great anti-air too. I mean, think about it. The output damage you probably would have got from there, you could get from the air a little bit, right? Yeah, pretty good damage. You know, obviously we have things like the air throw, right? Which is the fastest way to anti-air because, you know, air throw is two frames. So as long as you're in the air, you're gonna get that air throw really quick. Another thing that also like, you know, you have to keep in mind too, is like some moves are just super good at like going over like your, your, your 6P, right? This 6P is like super good because the air dash, right? So like, obviously they can't use any move besides like that. Right? But then you start fighting players like this. And then look at this. You didn't get a lot of reward off that. Yeah, you, you went back to neutral, but like, what is it? what if it's a character that you're not gonna be able to beat in neutral? Like, uh, Ram versus Axel. 
Like if Axel six P's Ram and sends her back to neutral, is that really like effective when you didn't hit him? So this is why changing up how you anti her uh, helps because if you start doing this, then they're gonna start, the only way for them to tech a throw is for them to press the throw button. So when you start anti her so like this, this is guaranteed damage unless they tap. If you decide to air to air and you catch the dash, you also get rewarded. See that? Because you're catching the dash up. So this is why mixing up anti-air options is really good. I know a lot of people are like, yo, how do you low air throw? So like, basically, you respond to the air dash and you meet where the air dash is gonna go to, right? And then you just jump air throw. Because again, once somebody air dash, they cannot change their art of where they're gonna go, where they're gonna go. They have to finish that, that, that arch that they're going to before they can do anything else. So once somebody commits to a dash, that is guaranteed at that point. So when you, so obviously the way you can react, uh, you know, effectively is about where you're like positioned at. You're not gonna be able to react right here, right? Because look, it's too close. Like you don't, you can't, you can't see anything. You know, you're just guessing. But when you're like right here, if you know they're gonna jump at you, you have time to respond if they're gonna jump here. See, it also helps that air dash is very slow in this game. If it was in the other game, I feel like a lot of people have a hard time. Well, a harder time, let me say that better. And also sometimes, believe it or not, sometimes hitting somebody in the air while you're in the air is also pretty good because you get like a position, you get a positional uh, opportunity, right? Or like even for our characters who have grounded moves that can lunge them forward uh, after like a, like a, like an anti-air. So like, for example, this, this, the one thing Kai has is really good. Even if he, do, even if you do block, he can at least close the gap, you see? With that, he closed the gap there. And you can keep like a, a mini game of like ideas like this. Or you know, like, if you like wanna be Chirara, you can do this, you know? Or if you wanna just be patient, react. There's a lot of ways, but being right here, it's like, okay, I at least close the gap. I'll give you a good example. So if you know a character has like a lot of like multiple jump art, the high, the idea is to wait for them to use all of their jumps before you make an initial attack. Sometimes you can make it off the first one, but you should do it to test to see how they're moving. But the general thing you always want to kind of avoid until they're like done, right? So when you see somebody jump like that, you want to run away from them. And the reason why, because when you see the J2K, you can react, you see? You see how you react from that? But you can't react there because like you're just guessing there, right? I, even though it worked, but you can't react there. So like, boom. Getting behind them is really good too, you know? You could do something like that. I mean, obviously some characters have, you know, better options than others, but again, this is like general idea that you can use. I know a lot of good action players, what they do is run under and they'll try to do that, right? But it's also very hard. Another thing that is a good way of anti is this is really hard, right? It's really, really hard. <laughs> this is a very unique way of anti -air, I call it. I call it, the reason why I call it unique, the reason why I call it unique because it's very, for some reason, it's more easier to do in this game. But and that's like punishing like landing recovery. So if you know somebody's gonna like air dash back like that, you can punish their landing recovery very well. There, you'll see people use like normals like this to anti air too. But these are like big reads. Right? These are all reads. So it's also a good idea to try to use that too. So it's like those little things you want to keep in mind, you know? I think this would honestly level your anti-air game up by like 50. Like everybody about to start air throwing. I'm about to start getting upset. Cause I'm like, bro, who who taught this person? Who is this person? 